Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is AI behavior tree, the task node? Let's dive right into this. The task node, that is going to be our purple nodes here at the bottom of our tree, are intended to be the end of our branches. They're intended to allow you to just simply do a task. It's supposed to be something very simple, like for example, this wait task simply waits for a duration we specify. Maybe we have a task for playing a sound. All it's going to do is take a sound and play it. Now, the tasks themselves can be accessed, as you saw, by right clicking anywhere in your event graph, going to tasks, and choosing one of the pre built tasks. Or, if you create your own task, like I have one here called task task, it'll show up in this list as well. You can create your own tasks, or you can use the pre built ones. All of the tasks are going to have their own parameters set up based on the task itself. You're not going to find really anything that is going to be the same between task to task. They're all unique because they're intended to serve a unique function. Now, keep in mind the task in, is intended to do something very simple and small. You can create your own tasks, and we'll cover that in a second, but you really don't want to have something very complex. Maybe a, a cone check or a line trace or a custom move to where you have a custom abort node or it rechecks the target every so often. Even then, maybe have the move check and the target check being separate so you can string them along in a sequence and abort easier. So let's go ahead and cover the task itself. If we do new task, what we're going to do is come up with this. It's going to be an event graph with nothing in it. Now there are six overridable nodes. You have the tick, the execute, and the abort, along with the AI versions of each of these. The tick is normal. It is called whenever there's a tick on this task. The execute is whenever it's called for the first time. It's a single run, basically. It's your on begin play. And then your abort, this isn't your end play. This is when an abort is called down from a higher end node. Remember if you're using a decorator, for example, and you have the abort option turned on, if this was to abort self, and then the abort was called inside of our task, if we have the receive abort node overrided, receive abort event overridden, then this will get called. Now let's go ahead and show this an example. Let me go ahead and override my egg receive execute, and we're going to do something simple. We're just going to print out a string, and we're going to print out that you know, this is our awesome task. And then we're going to go ahead and compile it, and then we're going to run it. And as you can see here, let me get rid of this, we have a simple sequence. It's going to run our task, and then it's going to wait five seconds. And let's run this. Now if we run it, well, we see, we, we did see, this is our awesome task in the top left, and we see our sequence running. But we're not seeing anything else happen. We're not seeing it go to the next wait. We're not seeing it go back up. It's stuck. And the reason it's stuck is the task requires a finish node to be called. There are two of them, finish abort and finish execute. Technically, there is also finish on message and message with ID, but these are more specific. This allows the task to wait for a message in order to finish rather than finish executing or finish aborting. Let's add the finish execute node and wired it up. We should see something different. Now when we run this, well now we're seeing it constantly being spammed. If we go back into our sequence, you can see it is constantly running. You'll see the root flash every so often. And our task is running over and over and we're never actually getting to our next part of our sequence. And the reason for that is we are failing. We are not successful on this. And because it's a sequence node, if it fails, it'll go back and abort back to the top. The finish execute has a Boolean node called success. So if you want it to successfully execute and, pa and return a pass, you need to make sure it's checked. Now we should get our desired result. It prints out once, waits five seconds, and then it'll print out again. And if we go into here, we can actually see that happening. Waiting, then it'll go back and fire our print, wait again, and it will continue indefinitely. So that is the basics of a task. 
There are other options. There are other specific nodes for tasks themselves in here. Like for example, in the other behavior tree, you have the finish abort, the finish on method, and you can find some other things that are built specifically for the behavior tree in here in terms of a task, such as checking to see if the task is executing and aborting. And these are all handled separately. But the basics of the task is it's got the same features of a normal event graph. You can use your normal blueprint math, you could use your utilities, you can check for the player, you can get rotations, and it's just expecting you to return something out or to do something. That's the biggest key. These, if you notice, don't have outputs. And they're not really intended to set anything. These are intended to do something. A service is intended to set something, and that is covered in a different video. And that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.